When it comes to EQ, are you stuck on when to use it, where to use it, and how to use it? Well, I'm here to help. I have four amazing tricks that will get your mix sounding pro in no time. Hey everyone, it's Mythical. Today I'm going to be showing you four very useful and creative ways to use EQ. These will help polish your mix and make them sound a lot more pro in no time. But if this is your first time here, welcome. Maybe consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell to stay up to date on more Logic Pro 10 tips and tricks. Also consider supporting on Patreon if you haven't. So the first thing that we're gonna be doing is getting rid of nasty frequencies. And all we're gonna be doing is using an EQ with some narrow cuts to remove room resonances and gross sounding frequencies that shouldn't be there, okay? So let's take a listen to the track that I have in front of me. I wrote right before recording today and we'll get some context of what we're working with. Okay, cool. So all we have to do to achieve getting rid of these nasty frequencies is just by using your basic EQ and this applies to every DAW, every standard EQ that comes with it. All we're going to be doing is using a narrow Q band and moving from left to right on the audio spectrum trying to find those nasty frequencies. So let's begin right at 100 hertz and bring it all the way up to as far as it can go and in logic it's 24 dB and a maximum narrow Q of 100. And let's just go ahead and solo out the piano and we'll play and sweep from left to right. There's one right there. Cut it. Oh, found another one. So yeah, around the 400, the 500 hertz, 700 hertz, and 1000 hertz is where I found some pretty nasty frequencies on this piano, and it's just going to help out the, the overall mix, and you definitely want to do this removal of these frequencies before you do any additive EQing, so that's just one thing to kind of keep in mind, is just get rid of the frequencies as best as you can before you move on to any character style uh, of EQ and we can add a high pass filter or a low shelf on the piano to help get rid of any excess um, low end that we might not need so just things to keep in in consideration but definitely will help out as far as the overall mix goes and that actually just brings me into the next point which is your additive EQ or EQ that is going to give your instrument, your vocals, whatever you're working with, more character. Now that we got rid of all of our nasty frequencies, we can consider enhancing the good ones. So we're going to make sure that we're not in solo mode anymore. And all we need to do is just open another EQ. And it's the same process as before. We're going to be doing some sweeps. But this time, instead of with a narrow Q, we'll have a much wider Q. And we'll find areas of the audio spectrum that are a lot more pleasant to the ear and give benefit to the overall mix. But usually after an EQ that I do a bunch of cuts, I do like to add a little bit of compression afterwards. And there isn't a hard and fast rule saying that you have to add a compressor after you do cuts on your EQ. It's just your workflow and whatever sounds good to your ear. 
that's what you should do. So you don't need to technically copy what I'm doing. You just need to listen to whatever sounds good to you. So I'm just going to add a generic EQ and we'll get right into this. So let's go ahead and play the track and start finding those nice frequencies. Yeah, so that's basically it. I just found a nice pleasant area around 150 hertz and boosted it by 3 dB and 1000 hertz around 2 dB. It's going to differ in your mix, of course, but the process is always the same. And it's really quite easy to get a, a pretty solid sound when you just take a systematic approach at your mixing. So now that we've successfully made our track sound nice and warm and fit comfortably in the mix, maybe it's time in the song that we want to completely go in a different direction and add a special effect to the particular track. And let's say that we want to do a telephone or megaphone effect. Well, it's really, really easy in Logic's EQ. So what we'll do is just add another EQ here and we'll actually take it one step further and do a whole automation series. So I'm going to make sure my high pass and low pass filters are active and I'm going to hit a on my keyboard to bring up the automations. And the easiest way to cycle through some of the options in your EQ, you have a lot of different options. Some of the, sometimes they can get kind of confusing. So when I know what I want, I usually will just go to where it says read, I'll bring it down to touch. And if I know I wanna like boost my mids for whatever reason, I'm, I will hit that and it'll bring up that option automatically. And I won't have to um, cycle through the ones by trial and error. So I'll just make sure that we have that active and we'll just make sure we got that. So we'll go back to our EQ and we'll do our high cut frequency. And I'll bring it down to right around 2000. And same with the low cut frequency. And we'll bring it up to right around here. Let's just see what this sounds like. Let's just go ahead and play the track and see what this, what this gives us. Pretty cool, very easy, and what did that take? Less than a minute to just dial in some settings to get a cool effect. You can do this on anything you want. You can do this on buses, your drums, your synths, vocals especially. Um, but yeah, the sky's the limit, especially when it comes to automation. So finally, I just wanna talk about creating space in the mix. And all that is, is simply carving out space in the audio spectrum for more important instruments. So for instance, your mix in your song, you might determine that the bass guitar is more important than the kick in the context of your mix. Where this particular mix, I've determined that the kick drum 
has a little bit more importance than the bass guitar. So I've done some cuts on the bass and added some side chain compression. So I'll just bring up my mixing board and bring open my kick EQ and my bass EQ. And you can kind of see as I hit play where the energy is really kind of focused. And in the kick, there's the of 55, 60 hertz, and that's where I basically cut my bass guitar, just a little bit, almost 3 dB, just to kind of give a little bit of space for the kick to shine through even more. So, on top of that, instead of just EQ, a static EQ, you can also do some sidechain compression. Logic's compressors will sidechain to pretty much anything, and bass guitar and kick, it's very easy to integrate both of those. So that's exactly what I've done here. So every time the kick hits, I have the compressor set at a negative three dB reduction. It's not super audible, but it, it, it gives enough effect to where it clears up some of that, that low end. Okay, so let's just take it off a of solo and listen to the whole context here. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up the four creative, interesting ways you can use your EQ. And you know, if you just do things in a systematic order when it comes to mixing, you can quickly achieve a very professional sound just with stock plugins and your DAW at home. And just remember that when you're doing all of your mixing, all of the creative and character side of things, just make sure that you mix in the context of the whole song and don't mix in solo those decisions will greatly benefit the overall outcome of your of your song so yeah if you liked the video just give that thumbs up and if you didn't hit that dislike button otherwise i will see you next time